to Significant TV, Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Larry Bell, General Manager of Serta Pro Painters of Cherry Hill. Well, Serta Pro Cherry Hill. Right. Yes, you got okay. it. Right. Okay, Larry, welcome to the show. Long time no see. Thanks, Fran. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Good to also. see you. Yeah, pretty cool. I mean, we go way back. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's right. Yeah. That's right. My first job out of college, Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. PA. Mm -hmm. Well, Larry, take us back. Entrepreneurship and you go hand in hand. Um, tell us a story. Take us back. Okay. For me, uh, I my first job out of college, I moved to Pittsburgh. I stayed there a few years, did a lot of travel. I moved back to Philadelphia to go to the Wharton School to get my MBA. There, I applied for a position. There's an organization at the school called the Wharton Small Business Development Center. And um, I had gotten exposed a little bit to entrepreneurship while at, at Wharton with a couple of classes. I applied for the position because they needed someone with a financial and accounting background to do financial statements for entrepreneurs. That's right. one of the things that the Small Business Development Center does is works with small businesses in, in whatever capacity they need. They may right. need marketing help, sales help, mm -hmm. financial help, uh, funding, banking, that, that sort of thing. Right. So that was my first exposure to entrepreneurship that that gave me the idea that I could be an entrepreneur. Ah. But you know, it, it took me back to my younger years. I grew up in uh, West Philadelphia and in my neighborhood was a butcher, mm -hmm. was a grocery store owner, a shoe repair shop, a sporting goods shop. And when I thought about it later, I never thought that I could be one of those people myself. There was no one in my family that was an entrepreneur. Most most of my family either worked uh, government type jobs mm -hmm. or really were just unemployed. That was the okay. way my family okay. was. So I had no exposure not, as a kid. Uh, not uncommon. No, so, definitely right, didn't. Right, right. I definitely didn't. Okay. So um, once I did that and started working with various different businesses, it exposed me thinking, I can, I can do this too. Okay. So um, over the years, I've had several business. I've, I've done the corporate type of work, and uh, I mean that's what Wharton really prepared you for right. back back then. But I've always had businesses on the side. Tell us I mean, about some of those businesses. Okay, my my my, my, <laughs> my first business was just a consulting firm. Once I left Wharton, mm -hmm. where I was helping people with their taxes, I would do financial statements for mm -hmm. them, business plans. That, that sort of thing. That was my mm -hmm. first foray into entrepreneur, but it was just a side sure. side business. Sure. The second foray into uh, entrepreneurship was one of my classmates at Wharton. We decided to start doing parties. And mm. uh, so we would give maybe four or five parties a year, make a little bit of money. Well, it really wasn't worth it for the hard work that we put in, but we it, it was an entrepreneurship mm -hmm. thing. So we put together a corporation. We did all of that. Mm. Then we took it another step um, further. We started a jazz festival. Mm. So, uh, and, and matter of fact, now it's one of the largest jazz festivals in the country. It's called the Capital Jazz Fest in, in D.C. So we mm. did uh, the first year, uh, that would have been 1993. We did one in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. We lost $40,000. Okay. So <laughs> now I know you're an entrepreneur. You've got to lose some money. Yes, we lost. Some the, money. We, the next year we did one in Jersey and mm -hmm. in uh, Atlanta. So mm -hmm. we did two others. And we, it was a real good learning process because for that one, we had to put together investment documents because we didn't have the money to fund sure. a large uh, event like that. So we got investors. We put together documents and, and got people to invest. And fortunately, they were all family and friends. Okay. So they were patient with us with the money that we lost the first year. We weren't able to pay them back for okay. a couple years. Mm -hmm. So that was my initial exposure to entrepreneurship. And since then, I've had several other businesses. Okay. I know I won't run through all those right now. <laughs> okay, but, okay. But we will later, I okay. guess. Okay. Well, so you've got this background, the Wharton training, um, part of the Wharton uh, Small Business Development Center. And now you're in a franchise. You're part of a franchise. Tell us 
how does franchising relate to entrepreneurship? What's it like? How does your experience, your past experience, how has that prepared you? So, mm -hmm. you know, 50 questions in, in yep. one sentence. Yep. Okay, franchising, the thing that I liked about it is, is, is because, uh, and all franchises aren't like this. The one mm -hmm. I chose is, it, it's, it's turnkey. Mm -hmm. Number one, when I, I looked at several different opportunities, I was working uh, at a university in the area and I hit the proverbial glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. There was really nowhere else for me to go, so I mm -hmm. decided to you know, start looking at other, other opportunities. So um, I looked at a lot of different businesses. I always wanted to buy a business. That was okay. my thought even when uh, I was at, at Wharton School, okay. to buy one because I didn't, I'm not the type that want to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did it with the jazz festivals, but... Um, you lost the, money the yeah, first year. Exactly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and at the point that I was at, you know, I've had this business since 2010. I couldn't afford to do that. I needed something that I could ramp up fairly quickly because mm -hmm. you know you, at this point I have family obligations right. all of those you can't mm -hmm. just leave and take five years before right. you start turning a profit when you got mortgage and all those other things right. tuition things of those to, to uh to pay so I looked at various different um, opportunities I decided on this one for a few few reasons number one even though I had to pay a franchise fee to get mm -hmm. in it still is a low cost to, to, mm -hmm. to get into a painting business. Mm -hmm. And I always want, I wanted a service business mm -hmm. and also I'm, I'm into home improvement. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I, I do some of that stuff myself. And the other thing that made a difference for me is that I knew that it was something that didn't take a whole lot of skill. I could take this and ramp it up fairly easy mm -hmm. and even be able to hire people from the community, which I've been able to do. I hire mm -hmm. folks that you know are graduating from high school. Mm -hmm. They they work under some of my other more experienced painters, mm -hmm. and they learn a skill that they can use for the rest of rest of their wow. life. So you are really part of the entrepreneurial ecosystem, um, helping it grow, helping it continue by running a franchise. Now your franchise is in New Jersey. Yes, in Cherry that's Hill. the location. Okay. Although I I cover a good portion of Philadelphia also. Okay. I located it over in New Jersey because I was buying one and that was the one that was available and um, my family, I have a lot of family over in that area mm -hmm. and plus the towns that I cover are pretty affluent. Mm -hmm. So um, th that was what I, what I looked at. Those were the things I looked mm -hmm. at for that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because uh, you, the one thing about you know what we try to do in the painting business, my my I guess best customer is someone that's owned their home for a while, has a mm -hmm. certain level of income, right. their home has a certain value. Mm -hmm. So when you look at all of those things, you need to be in, in, in certain towns, right. you know, to, for someone that's going to want to pay the type of prices that we charge mm -hmm. and the type of quality that we give a customer. Mm -hmm. And, and that, in some senses, goes back to the Wharton training and just good, solid entrepreneurial um, excellence, and that is knowing your customer, understanding their pain, doing the research, understanding the market, and then making sure that you bring value. That's yeah. exactly, yeah. that's exactly yeah. right, because uh, there's a million. That's one thing, the, the good side about me going into this business with that, there was a low barrier to entry, right. but the fact that there's a low barrier to entry, there's a ton of people out here that can buy a couple paintbrushes and a ladder and mm -hmm. say I'm a painter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we don't compete with them that much, but in, in the area that we're trying to 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 work in, but you know that that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. If there's a small job, someone will say, "I want my bedroom painted," mm -hmm. but I have a guy down the street that's going to do it. Can you meet their price? And you say no. It doesn't work. No. <laughs> you it doesn't no. work. It doesn't so work. you've shared some significant stories in terms of entering entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurship journey. You're really in a unique pos position to share significant advice about being a great entrepreneur. And what would some of those words be? Because you've been on the consulting side, mm -hmm. you know, you've been in corporate, you've been out of corporate. My, I, I'd give a couple of things. Number one, do your homework. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people will just have a business idea and say, I'm just gonna go out and do it. Spend the time, even if you just jot down some ideas, you don't have to have a formal business plan, but think it, think it through. Who are my customers going to be? 
You know, what, what resources do I need to get this job mm -hmm. done? How are my customers going to even find out mm -hmm. that I have a service or a product? You know, so you got you to think all that, all that through ahead of time because, as you know, and the statistics are there, most businesses don't last more than two years. Right. And most of the time, it's because they didn't do their homework ahead of time and really understand what they were getting them, themselves into. The other thing for most people, and I, I give a lot of advice to folks, if you have a job, start your business on the side. Mm -hmm. Start it on the side until you get to a point where that business is keeping you from doing your job. Then mm -hmm. you can kick your job to the curb. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have the, the ability to do that. I've come into so many people that will want to start a business and, and just quit their job. And they have no resources. Mm -hmm. And then after mm -hmm. a year or so, the money's not coming in yet because right. it takes a while. Right. And where mm -hmm. are they? You know, they're out looking for a job. And so you, you never realized your dream. Mm -hmm. So I, I've said that to most of the people I talk to. Do If you can do it on the side, do it on the side, really. Which really leads me to the fact that in your business, you're actually able to have multiple businesses in that in running the franchise, you are a business owner, uh, a business manager. And as a result of all the experience you have, you're able to speak with people, you're able to help train entrepreneurs, and you're able to, again, help help people move forward. Um, tell us where people can find you on the web. You can find me at uh, www.certapro.com backsplash Cherry Hill. Mm. Or if you just uh, Googled Certa Pro Painters, uh, Cherry Hill, we're going to come up. Because that's the one thing, other thing I would suggest <laughs> to folks is that work hard to make sure when people do a Google search, you're at, near, at or near the top. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll find us, find us at either one of those or you can call our 800 number, 1-800-GO-SERTA, and uh, you will get me that way also. Mm -hmm. Does everyone in your company wear the shirts? Yes, the uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. In the last couple of years, we've chosen this color, so mm -hmm. wherever you go around the country, so actually Serta Pro is a North American company, so we're in Canada and Mexico, mm -hmm. you will see someone wearing, wearing this color. I love the color. It's bright, it, it's very clear. Any symbolism in the five stars? Uh, yes, that's that's the type of service we try to give to all of our customers, five star. After every paint job, Soda Pro is going to call that customer and ask them how their experience mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. with the painters, with me, with our 800 number or whatever, whoever they touched, they're mm -hmm. going to ask a, a detailed survey. And uh, so we try to make sure all of our customers are happy, no matter what, from the smallest to the largest job. Mm -hmm. I love it. The the symbolism, the visual is important. You're in a business where you're literally painting um, a better picture for folks. So very, very yes. powerful. Yes. Thank well, you. Larry, it's so powerful to have you on the show. Uh, very significant. Um, thank you for being part of our show. And thanks for continuing, <coughs> excuse me, the entrepreneurial tradition from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia to Cherry Hill. Thank you, Fran. It's really good talking to you. And uh, I hope, you know, the folks that listen to this show can get a few nuggets out of it. You know, that you, if you're looking to be an entrepreneur, it's not easy, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. if, if you're thinking about doing something else, being a painter or whatever it may be, you know, get in contact with us. Terrific. Well, thank you. Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. Our guest today is Larry Bell, General Manager of Serta Pro Painters of Cherry Hill. You can find him on the web. And if you need advice on entrepreneurship, you also can contact Larry. Thanks again for watching Significant TV.